Hello, my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astrophotography Tutorials. Today is part two of the QHY CCD Pole Master Electronic Polar Scope and Jeffrey Geis is my special guest and he's going to cover today the hardware setup, the software, and the verification. Also, as an extra special bonus, OPT Telescopes has offered a limited time discount for this Pole Master Scope. So stick around at the end of the video. You can get this special discount code and you'll be able to save 10% off of your purchase. So let's go ahead and assemble the QHY CCD Pole Master Electronic Polar Scope. What you do is this adapter ring, which is specific to your mount, is threaded. I don't know if you can see the threads in there. The uh, holes that are in the camera itself are drilled. So what that means is you're going to put the screws in the camera and then you'll mount it. This will mount to the gem next, and then this camera will mount to that. The scope is here, and this device simply fits in right here. Now, there's two small set screws here and here, and you use an Allen wrench coming in from the angle here. Now. The way that this polar alignment scope is made into the curved portion of the gem, I have chosen to go ahead and mount that so that thumb screw is out the side. It simply gives you a little bit more room here to move it. If it was up here, you can see there's very little clearance behind it, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in this way. According to the instructions, they prefer to have your USB port out the side. I'm going to have it come out the side of my electronics on this side. I'm going to simply just tighten down the little thumb screw, and there you go. You can see how I've got the uh, set screw up to the side. It would be a lot easier than trying to fiddle it with it up here at the top or down the bottom. Go ahead and give it a couple of turns. Fits uh, comes right off. Okay. We'll set that to the side, take our nice new anodized red dust cap, which by the way uh, is pretty close to the color of my ATIC. Now you've got a QHY branded EQ6. The installation of this uh, to the hardware, it's an absolute one for easy. Um, you, you couldn't get any easier than this. This is not a difficult uh, upgrade to your mount. Showing off their brand new camera, the one that we're talking about here. We're going to go to the download section. You're going to roll down. Look for the Pole Master. All right, you're going to download here the driver, and you're also going to download the software. An enormous amount of rain, and in my yard you can see some of the standing rain. It is December, so that's not uncommon, um, but that's one of the reasons why I think this device will be handy. So I won't have to kneel down on my little makeshift corner pad, which is right here, down in that moist grass, getting those knees, as we know horribly muddy and wet. First thing you want to do is connect to the Polemaster video camera and you'll get a window like this. And you're going to bump up your exposures uh, to where you need them to be. This seems to be a good number for me, a little gain. It's a little noisy, but it doesn't matter. We're not taking images here. You're going to collect, uh, select finished for that. Now you're going to want to um, put the crosshair over Polaris. I use the upper uh, magnification window. Uh, look at on camera how sensitive this camera is that it's picking up satellites in the area. Also over, and I'm using my click wheel. 
and you just spin it around until they are close. There we go. They're all inside um, the red circle. So we pre press uh, success. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and um, select select no. We're going to use a new uh, axis. We're going to uh, calculate a new axis. I'm going to select this star this time. Okay, now uh, for me, I'm using EQ mod on my Atlas uh, mount. I'm going to unpark the mount, and we're going to rotate that uh, mount in the clockwise direction. For me, that's east. It doesn't say specifically how much to move, it just says please rotate the equatorial at some angle according to the directions. Um, Gonna give it a good turn. Now you want to make sure your mount doesn't uh, have a crash, so be careful uh, if you've uh, if you've got your mount loaded, which I do. All right, we're gonna go back here. We're gonna say finish. We're done rotating. Uh, now we're gonna find that star again. Double click. Now it's gonna ask us to rotate again. I'm going to rotate uh, as far as I can with the gear mounted. There we go. We are near a mount uh, crash. I'm going to go ahead and say finished. select that star again. Okay. Now as you noticed over here, each uh, selective uh, sel star selection will check off one of these little circles until they are all green. Um, now it says rotate the equatorial telescope back to the original position. The, the easiest thing to do is just park it back home. Now I started in the park position. I should have clarified that. Um, I guess you don't have to start in the, uh, in the park position. Now what you can see it's doing here is it's finding the center of this rotation. So as the polar, as this scope is aligned right now, that red dot, and you can see the magnification on the circle upper left, that is the center rotation on uh, this scope right now. Check to make sure it comes to the park position. pretty close to home. Parked. Alright. Okay, so uh, rotate that back to correct. Double click Polaris. So now we're going to go back to that little plate solving circle thing. There we go. Pretty close. Mouse over and I use my little roller on my mouse to get all of the alignment stars inside the circle. There's one up there, two, three, four, five. Right now it's going to give us uh, pretty close polar alignment. Now once again I had set up last night and I haven't moved it, but we're just kind of double checking it because it doesn't take that long to double check it. All right, press success. Now we're going to adjust the equatorial telescope, and we're going to put we're going to put Polaris inside the green circle. All right, so I'm going to move over to the mount. And we're going to make a couple of quick adjustments here. And this is still the rough polar alignment. I'm going to give it a little bit uh, azimuth. Now to help, put the mouse over. altitude. Alright, there we go. Now, that should complete the rough polar alignment. Oh, sorry, one more step. Double click right in the center. There we go. And we're going to confirm that these are all 
try to fine tune those. They're all pretty good. Okay, success. All right, now we're going to do the precise polar alignment. <clears throat> now, if you can see over here, this is going to give, I guess, pixel positions and where uh, it wants these uh, positions to be. Uh, it's even easier than that. You just simply click the start monitor. And then this is like a live view, refreshing about every half a second. And you simply put the green over the red. Now I am doing this with the, the mount loaded, which can be a little more difficult than doing it when it's uh, unmounted. A little bit of azimuth here, if I can do that. We're pretty close. All right, that's pretty good. Considering the seeing, it might be the one causing that to fluctuate slightly. And then we click finished, and that completes the pole master alignment. Now, okay, so here we are. We're ready to use the uh, PHD to drift the line feature. Just to double check to see how good our PA uh, actually is. Um, we're going to go, I've already slewed to the location. You simply press drift, and it'll choose a star, and it'll do its thing usually takes several minutes before you can get a good trend uh, to appear here. Last night I did one iteration of the Pullmaster software and I was around two uh, to three. Um, it was getting tighter than that as I let it run uh, and then I went ahead and did uh, take some 1200 second and some 600 second subs later in the evening uh, and I ended up with round stars and it was probably some of the best subs that I've gotten uh, right here it's recording um, a fairly flat trend line on the deck and it's reporting about half uh, an arc minute there's less than half an arc minute 0.14 one pixel off uh, is what it's reporting after about a minute of drift obviously this will trend uh, one way or the other uh, after several minutes or many many minutes of of drifting but that is uh, for the time I spent um, adjusting that mount maybe five minutes and I was talking you through it uh, that is pretty accurate uh, drift alignment right there for uh, Atlas with those unmodified Atlas uh, adjustment screws we'll go ahead and move the mount into the altitude uh, portion of the um, drift line check and then we'll we'll see where we are there but under a minute with some numbers uh, bouncing around a half of a minute I'm pretty happy with that quality of uh, alignment see what we get here in the uh, altitude direction and those that are uh, more considered experts at this function of PhD2 uh, might you may tell me uh, it, please in the comments let me know if I'm not doing something correct here um, I, I'm sure I'm not doing it long enough uh, once again this is simply for uh, the video purposes another way to double check what pole master has done um, here we go but after about a minute uh, of drift we're getting down to the 1.4 1.3 1.8 or 1.05 now we're below a minute, uh, there's a half a minute, 0.3, that um, is a fairly flat trend line for deck. And I can say I've never been able to get that on my own with a visual polar scope. And using this feature I've gotten a lot better uh, than the visual polar scope. I certainly didn't get this good um, that quick. Uh, I really think this is a great device and it's going to help a lot of beginners like myself uh, understand uh, the important one. Once you understand the importance of the pro uh, polar alignment, it will take some of the uh, mystery out of it and make it a lot quicker, which is important for us uh, that take uh, set up and tear down uh, nightly. Um, and it'd be a fine product to, to throw on an uh, observatory uh, based telescope to double check. Uh, you know, your friend's got one of these, he brings it over, 
you got the same kind of adapter, you put it on, use it, um, give it a try. Maybe maybe once a quarter, you, you you take it out of the box and you can double check your PA. I mean, it can ride right on the scope. You leave it on. Um, it also is quite a sensitive little live camera, uh, and it'd be an interesting uh, choice to, you know, maybe if it could come off and mount it somewhere else, you could point it at the sky and it, you could pop up a live camera video. You might show some uh, people interested in, in, in astronomy. Look at that, <clears throat> 0.07, one pixel off. I would say this is a, success, uh, is a successful test of the Pole Master Polar Electron, Electronic Polar Line Scope. I am glad I got one. I want to thank Jeffrey Geis for showing us all the ins and outs of the Pole Master CCD. I'm sold. I want to get one now. If you would like to get one, visit OPT Telescopes. They have a limited time special for the Pole Master CCD. You will get the Pole Master for 10% off for a limited time between February 15th and February 28th, 2016. All you have to do is enter this promo code. Now this promo code is just like a password. You have to enter it uppercase AP, lowercase Doug, uppercase PM, and you will get your 10% off. That's 30 bucks in your pocket. Great deal. Now, if you have any problems with the code or you need to talk to somebody about this, the friendly folks at OPT Telescopes would be glad to help you. Their phone number is 1-800-483-6287. You have a video you would like to share about your astrophotography processing, your tips, your tricks, please contact me at dhubble at gmail.com. If this is your first time watching, I would like you to subscribe. I publish two astrophotography videos on the 1st and 15th of every month. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.